Hmm. Well, second book of Nephi. I gotta warn you, um, it's mostly for the first three chapters, it's Lehi running his mouth. It's his last speech, and he wants to make it a good one. And not a lot comes to pass, because he's speaking in real time, supposedly, to his, um, his sons. Well, let's get that first, it came to pass, out of the way. The only one. <sighs> like I said, things start coming to pass pretty regular after, you know, by chapter 4. So, bear with me, folks. Oh, that's so nice. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> and now it came to pass that after I, Nephi, had made an end of teaching my brethren, that's where he was reading all that Isaiah to him, and then he explained it to him. So basically, chapter 1 of Second Nephi is just more the same. Really, there's... He didn't need to make it two books. He could have just made it one big one. That's all it is. It's just... It continues on without missing a beat. Uh... After I, Nephi, had made an end to teaching my brethren, our father, Lehi, got to give him his, got to give his name, also spake many things unto them, how great the things that the Lord had done for them in bringing them out of the land of Jerusalem. And he spake unto them concerning their rebellions upon the waters. Yeah, can't let that go. And the mercies of God in sparing their lives that they were not swallowed up in the sea. And he also spake unto them concerning the land of promise which he had obtained, which they had obtained. How merciful the Lord had been in warning us that we should flee out of the land of Jerusalem. So basically, so far, this is all old shit. Everything here has been, all this has been said before. He's just, he's telling his, his sons, you know, including the, the youngest ones. <laughs> all right. For behold, said he, I have seen a vision. What else is new? In which I know that Jerusalem is destroyed, and had we remained in Jerusalem, we should have perished. Well, there you go. Confirmation. He confirmed the first vision with a second vision. God, who needs, you know, who needs to be peer-reviewed? <laughs> He saw it. It happened finally. That's why he knew they could make all those trips back. And yet he didn't know that he had time to pick up all his gold and all that. And <laughs> hmm. But, said he, notwithstanding, that's one word, our afflictions, we have obtained a land of promise. A land of promise. None of this is capitalized. A land which is choice above all other lands. All this is some old shit. They've, this is all just regurgitated First Nephi. <laughs> A land which the Lord hath covenanted with me should be a land for the inheritance of my seed. 
See, Lehi and God worked it all out. Yea, the Lord hath covenanted this land unto me and unto my children forever. And yet, in this book, we see uh, the... I don't want to spoil this for you folks. You don't mind, do you? Well, the Jaredites all wiped each other out and left nothing be but skeletons and ruined cities and steel swords rusting. And many thousands of years later, the Nephites saw those ruins. And funny, uh, those, <laughs> those Jaredite ruins just held up so much better than the Nephite ones did because not a trace. None. So anyway, yeah, they're land forever, and yet the Jaredites wiped each other out, and then the Nephites got wiped out, all the way down to Moroni, and he just barely had time to bury this gold book and put a rock over it on the hill of Cumorah. And then he became an angel. So, I mean, no problem. Wherefore I, wait, wait, wait. But he said, notwithstanding our afflictions, we have obtained a land of promise, a land which is choice above all others. Uh, yea, the Lord. Uh, Wherefore I, Lehi, prophecy according to the workings of the Spirit, which is in me that there shall none come unto this land, save they shall be brought by the hand of the Lord. I believe I'm living in this country, and you're saying God brought me here? I thought my parents did that. So all you immigrants that came here, including the 9-11 hijackers, I mean, you got to this country because God brought you here by his hand. That's nice. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Wherefore, this land is consecrated upon unto him whom he shall bring. None of this is capitalized, so you never know when they, when they use him. I don't know who they're talking about, because they don't capitalize it, so I don't know if it's God or not, or Jesus or not. Ah. <sighs> And if it be so, that they shall serve him according to the commandments which he hath given, it shall be a land of liberty. <laughs> oh, that sounds so modern. <laughs> I don't believe I've seen that in the Bible. Liberty. Yeah, maybe. Can't be sure now. <sighs> Unto them... Wherefore, they shall never be brought down into captivity. If so, it shall be, be because of iniquity. So, if you find your, your ass in jail, it's your fucking fault. If you're a slave, I guess that's your fault too, I guess. It seems to say. Captivity because of iniquity. And if iniquity shall abound... Cursed shall be the land for their sakes. But unto the righteous it shall be blessed forever. Forever. That's all they're promising. No wonder so many boobs sign on. Forever. Happy. Forever. Sounds, sounds marvelous. <laughs> and behold, it is wisdom that this land should be kept from the knowledge of other nations. For behold, many nations would overrun the land, that there be no place for an inheritance. Well, see, that's where you're wrong. I mean, there's plenty of evidence that other people have been here. I mean, they've found evidence that the Chinese have been here. Uh, um, the Vikings. The Irish. The Templars, supposedly. Uh... Lots of little clues that people have been here before, and they didn't find it so easy to live here. I mean, the the pilgrims would have probably died off if the Indians hadn't, you know, been so charitable to their to their detriment.
yeah, all these people just find it so easy, as easy as these people did in this book. Yeah, they just went there, and everything was smooth sailing. I mean, the only time they got in trouble was that one storm, and that's only because the brothers were uh, getting surly, making merry in the middle of an ocean voyage. They decided to start dancing and shit and being rude. And behold, it, it, yeah, let's see. Wherefore I, Lehi, have obtained a promise that insomuch as those whom the Lord God shall bring out of the land of Jerusalem shall keep his commandments, they shall prosper upon the face of this land, and they shall be kept from all other nations. that they may possess this land unto themselves. And if it be so that they shall keep his commandments, much repetition here, they shall be blessed upon the face of the land, and there shall be none to molest them, except the clergy, <laughs> nor to take away the land of their inheritance, and they shall dwell safely forever. There's that magic word again, forever. An impossibility, by the way. But behold, when the time cometh that thou shalt dwindle in unbelief, when thou shalt. That's not if. That's stamp it, man going to happen. But behold, when the time cometh that thou shall dwindle in unbelief, after they have received so great, wait, so great blessings from the hand of the Lord, having a knowledge of the creation of the earth, And all men knowing the great and marvelous works of the Lord from the creation of the world, having power given them to do all things by faith. They can do anything by faith. Open heart surgery. I believe it. It's done. Yeah, by faith. Having all the commandments from the beginning and having been brought by his brought by his infinite goodness into this precious land of promise, behold, I say, if the day shall come that they will reject the Holy One of Israel. I love how they back off right after they say, It's gonna happen. Well, maybe. It'll be bad if it happens. Hopefully it won't happen. I just lost my place. God damn it. Having had all the commandments from the beginning and having been brought by his infinite goodness into this precious land of promise, which was so easy to settle. I mean, they only had one little storm. It was a bad one and their compass malfunctioned, but that's just because they were being bad. But, but, behold, <laughs> behold, I say, <coughs> if the dangers will come, <coughs> pardon me, technical difficulties, uh, <coughs> if the day shall come that they will reject, now we're up to will, the, reject the Holy One of Israel, the true Messiah. their Redeemer, and their God. <laughs> That's like calling Solomon or King David God. Come on, he tried to be king. It didn't work out. You guys couldn't handle it. It's Elvis and Bruce Lee and James Dean all over again. No, they're not dead. Some other thing happened, and you just thought they were dead. 
Behold the judgments of him that is shall rest upon them. Yea, he will bring other nations unto them, and he will give unto them power. And he will take away from them the lands of their possessions, and he will cause them to be scattered and smitten. That's what that explains what happens to the happened to the Indians, the Lamanites. Excuse me, the Lamanites. Yea, as one generation patheth, passeth to another, there shall be bloodsheds and great visitations among them. That's why they knew how to get all those extra blank plates. Just scratch it down, whatever happened. <sighs> yeah, don't you believe it? Wherefore, my sons, see, this is Lehi talking to Nephi and the gang, you know. I would that ye would remember, yea, I would that ye hearken unto my words. Oh, that ye would awake, awake from a deep sleep, yea, even from the sleep of hell. And shake off the awful chains by which ye are bound, which are the change, chains which bind the children of men, that they are carried away captive down to, to the eternal gulf of misery and woe. Awake and arise. I wonder if they could get a copyright infringement on the J-dubs. Awake with capitalized. It's right there. You can prove they wrote this in the 1820s and still have the copyright. I'd love to see that. I tried to get uh, some elders and J-dubs J -dubs to talk together. I almost timed it right. They saw each other and didn't want any part of it. <laughs> of course, I'd talked to those elders before, and they didn't want to ever talk to me again after that. All they did is ask questions and sent them off to their masters and said, Yeah, come back. Uh, this is my apartment number. <laughs> Would you like my phone number? <laughs> yeah, nothing. Awake and arise from the dust, and hear the words of a trembling parent, whose limbs ye must soon lay down in the cold and silent grave. His limbs, they're going to bury him like a Christmas tree? I mean, just kidding. <laughs> of course they're going to bury all of him. He just said bury all his limbs. <laughs> so. Uh, cold and silent grave from whence no traveler can return. Isn't that Milton? <sighs> A few more days. Might be Dante. I don't know. Leaky vessel. I feed it all the time. I have to reread shit. I wonder why that is. Ah. <sighs> A few more days, and I go the way of all the earth. That's Lehi saying he's going to croak pretty soon, and this is his soliloquy. <laughs> but behold, the Lord hath redeemed my soul from hell. That's nice. I have beheld his glory, and yet he's uncapitalized. And I am encircled about eternally in the arms of his love, uncapitalized. I'm sorry, it's just, I'm used to my King James. They capitalize he and his when they're talking about this big dad, big sky daddy, you know, with the beard in the sky, who's apparently a voyeur. And I desire that ye should remember to observe the statutes and the judgments of the Lord. Behold, this hath been the anxiety of my soul from the beginning. 
my heart hath been weighed down with sorrow from time to time, for I have feared lest the hardness of your hearts, the Lord your God, should come out in the fullness of his wrath upon you, that ye be cut off and destroyed for ever, or that a cursing should come upon you for the space of many generations, and ye are visited by sword and by famine and by and are hated and are led according to the will and captivity of the devil. Oh, my son, <laughs> what a nice pep talk this is. It probably stirred him wrong. Oh, my sons, that these things might not come unto you, but that ye might be a choice and a favored people of the Lord, but behold, his will be done, for his ways are righteousness forever, except once in a while. And he hath said that inasmuch as ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land. God, much repetition? But inasmuch as ye will not keep my commandments, ye shall be cut off from mine presence, my presence. And now that my soul might have joy in you, that, and that my heart might leave this world with gladness because of you, that I might not be brought down with grief and sorrow to the grave, arise from the dust, my sons, and be men, and be determined in one mind. Yeah, think alike. Fuck that individuality. That's worldly. And in one heart, united in all things, that ye may not come down into captivity that ye may not be cursed with a sore cursing, and also that ye may not incur the displeasure of a just God upon you unto the destruction, yea, the eternal destruction of both soul and body. Awake, my sons. Yeah, he probably's putting him to sleep with this goddamn speech. <laughs> Awake, my sons, and put on the armor of righteousness. Shake off the chains with which ye are bound, and come forth out of obscurity, and arise from the dust. Rebel no more against your brother. Wonder who they're talking about. Whose views have been glorious, and who hath kept the commandments from the time we l that we left Jerusalem, and who hath been an instrument in the hands of God in bringing us forth into the land of promise? <sighs> for were it not for him, we must have perished with hunger in the wilderness, and it would have been your fault, Lehi. Nevertheless, ye sought to take us away, to take away, yet ye sought to take away his life. So he's talking to the other brothers now. <sighs> Daddy's pet. Yea, and he hath suffered much sorrow because of you, and I am exceed, and, and I exceedingly fear and tremble because of you, lest lest he shall suffer again. And I exceedingly fear and tremble because of you, lest he shall suffer again. For behold, ye have accused him that he sought power and authority over you. But I know that he hath not sought power, uh, sought for power nor authority over you, but he hath sought the glory of God and your eternal welfare. And ye have murmured, because ye ha he hath been plain unto you. Ye say that he hath used sharpness. Ye hath been angry with him. But behold, his sharpness was the sharpness of the power of the word of God, which, he, which was in him, 
and that which ye call anger, uh, you know, ye call anger, was the truth, according to which is in God, which he could not restrain, manifesting boldly concerning your iniquities. And it must needs be that the power of God must be with him, even unto his commanding that ye must obey. Little contradiction there? That's a verse 27, First Nephi, uh, Second Nephi 1, in case you want to look it up. Little contradiction there. <sighs> But, behold, it was not he, but it was the Spirit of the Lord, which was in him, which opened his mouth to utterance that he could not shut it. <laughs> I wonder if they gagged him when they tied him up those times. Didn't say. Didn't seem to. And now, my son, Laman, and also Lemuel, and Sam... And also my sons, who are the sons of Ishmael, behold, if ye will hearken unto the voice of Nephi, yet shall uh, uh, Nephi ye shall not perish. And if ye will hearken unto him, I leave unto you a blessing, yea, even my first blessing. But if ye will not hearken unto him, I take away my first blessing. Yea, even my blessing, and it shall rest upon him, his pet, Nephi. And now, Zoram, I speak unto you, now that we finally know your name. Behold, thou art the servant of Laban, the guy we bumped off. Nevertheless, thou hast been uh, thou hast been brought out of the land of Jerusalem, and I know that thou art a true friend unto my son Nephi forever. Wherefore, because thou hast been faithful, thy seed shall be blessed with my seed, with his seed. Oh, blessed with his seed. A little exclusion there. Verse 31. That they dwell in prosperity long upon the face of this land and nothing save it save it shall be iniquity among them shall harm or disturb their prosperity upon the face of the land forever wherefore if ye shall keep the commandments of the lord uh, the lord hath consecrated this land for the security of thy seed with the seed of my son. Pretty lame beginning for the second book of Nephi, don't you think? It's, they could have just started another chapter and kept going. Anyway, I, this one ran a little long and it wasn't worth it. <laughs> but what the hell, we're being, we're being, uh, being thorough. As much as possible. Peace and uh, read a book, any book.